Hello, we're so excited tonight to have wonderful Sandra Nielsen here with us. She's an overcomer, a writer, an illustrator, an artist, an advocate. Sandra lives in Sweden and loves fishing, taught to her by her grandpa. She's a go-getter at whatever she puts her hands to. One special and unique gift is that she's lived most of her life as a high-functioning form of autism called Asperger's syndrome. She was misdiagnosed with other conditions for many years. She says about Asperger's is like pretending to be normal and being good at it. She's an overcomer in so many different areas of life. Sandra always felt since a little girl that God was there right with her and she came to know Jesus as a teenager. She has had visions and encounters with God. She enjoys children's movies and is working on sharing her own story. She's an artist and writes children's book and much, much more. Like how fascinating and what a testimony, Sandra. Uh, had bringing you through, like I've had an opportunity to read through the start of her book, really, what she's put in and she's job. Um, what she has put in there is so much that she's lived through and yet she loves to laugh. <laughs> she, she just gets to laugh. I love that about Sandra. I really do. I think that's, I think that's such a gift that you give the world is joy that you bring and the laughter that you bring. So welcome. Thank you. Yes. And I met her through my, um, I was taking these challenges, you guys know, for the last five months and I met her in a 30 day challenge. She would pop on some of my live calls. She's just so loving and um, encouraging. And I've gotten to know her through us both being on these challenges. And now you've done how many challenges yourself? Uh, well, four, and um, well, I'm going on number five and six on the first September. So we're doing two challenges at once, and one I'm doing together with Ramona and Anders. So it's going to yeah. be like three people on that one, and then the other one I'm doing myself. I'm hoping to get someone on that challenge with me. It would be fun. That's awesome. You know, and challenges guys are you're taking a chunk of days, you know, whether three, five, seven, 14, and you're sometimes 30, and you're ministering in a certain area or helping people, coaching or something fun. And Sandra is using her life and what she's lived through with Asperger's and telling and high functioning and telling parents how to understand. I love it. I, I mean, it's ingenious how to understand their own children that live with this Asperger's, high-functioning Asperger's, which we'll talk about um, later on. But I want to start with, uh, have you always lived in Sweden? Yes. That's, that's very, wow. It's beautiful, right? Uh, well, excuse me, but you're cracking up a bit. Is oh, okay sorry. If you move the internet, maybe. No, it's probably me. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Okay, I think it's if I move. Sometimes it does that. Uh, have you always lived in Sweden? And how beautiful is it there? Yes. It is beautiful. It's uh, the mountains and the lakes. And I technically, I learned to be on, on the waters by my grandpa. And they have boats and everything. So... Uh, wow. had both they are home in heaven now yeah. my grandpa wow. got saved just a couple of weeks before he died wow wow so how is that a few years ago that he passed away yes that's over 10 years ago wow but you were really close with them you hung out with them on the water and yes um well when when my grandpa died, I was sad in my heart for a brief moment, but then God gave me this vision and I saw him walking up behind my grandma. And <laughs> my grandma wow. is turning around and saying, oh, you're here now. And my grandpa goes, oh yeah, now I'm here. And then I knew <laughs> he was safe, so I, I didn't cry. Wow, that's amazing. You get a lot of visions like that. I, I 
gather from your your book, which I want to talk about later. Um, so you're the only child in your family. You were, you were in that? Yeah. What was that like being the only child? You don't know anything different. Yes. Well, it is. It's hard now. It wasn't hard back then because I know that if I should lose my parents now, I am on my own. Wow. You have all of us in the peripheral, but that is your family there, and that that is so true. Do you have any cousins there or aunts and uncles? Well, I have, I have a couple of cousins, and, yeah. or well, I have a few on my dad's, quite a few on my dad's side, yeah. but. I don't really know them. I yeah. do yeah. have one cousin that I kind of connected with a way bit because she always wanted a sister very much. And, but uh, it's a little hard because I am <laughs> I'm like baptized in the Pentecostal church and she is a <laughs> Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. Oh, that's a different, <laughs> different <laughs> thoughts. Different. Yes, that would be a lot different. Wow. So that you know, I have. Go ahead. Uh, no. Go ahead. Ah, oh yes, I just said that. Well, it's just hard to talk about the Bible with her because uh -huh. we have so different viewpoints, and I, I, I just don't feel that I can't talk to her about it really. Yeah, yeah, because we always have to wait for people in their journey of yeah. finding truth of God and um, we want to be sensitive to that. So it's not as fun. Like I said to one of my friends um, a few years back, I said, I just want to share my spirit with you. Like I want to be able to share the deep thing that I, I experience and you understand. And that's yes. how you feel with your husband, I'm sure. Right. Yes. So you mentioned in your, you had mentioned in your book, um, like growing up, I, I don't know if I read a lot about school, but I pray before I read this question. So sometimes I'm like, oh, okay. Um, but how was how was school for you? Like, what kind of things did you have to experience there? It was just pain very much, and mm -hmm. it was it was so hard for me because there were things that I just couldn't deal with, and I had a mom that just wouldn't understand my pain point. And that's why also I'm talking to mothers because uh, I want to make them aware that there is a pain point and this pain point might actually be something in school that's uh, not mm -hmm. working for the children. And I've also brought this up lately that, you know, homeschooling is not bad for children with autism. And because I know that I, I was very bullied in school and I'm sorry. Uh, just not having friends and it's not like I didn't want, didn't want friends. It's, I wanted friends. Yes, I, I actually cried for friends mm. a lot. I, I cried and I begged God, I said, God, is it too much to us to have a friend? Mm. And then, um, well, technically, God gave me a friend, and He gave me a friend in the church where I spent a year between like high school studies and and elementary school. And that year was simply I had a friend there in church. But the interesting thing is, I did notice that I had a friend. Oh, that's. But that's, I think that's the part of the autism that you can have someone standing next to you and and they're trying to be your friend. And uh, if you're too hooked up in, in circumstances or thinking about something else, you don't even notice that you have a friend. I mean, I noticed when I wrote my book, I realized, wait, she was actually my friend. Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. So, Sounds crazy. Um, no, you're such a dynamic woman, Sandra. I don't think you even realize how empowering 
God uses you. It was so many, like Mary's on here saying, good evening, beautiful women. You know, um, you you touch uh, people's lives, Sandra. Look at me say, I love this so much, you know. And I know that even when we share a tape, it's only a piece, just a taste of the story of your life, you know. And I just honor you for coming on and and being open and willing to share. And it's good that you did your challenges before. <laughs> so you're just like you you've been answering some of these questions in your your challenges, I'm sure, and sharing the the depth of when I was in uh, parts of your book, um, you were sharing incidences like where your friend would become your babysitter, like friend, that your parents would leave you with somebody in your peer age, whatever, but that wasn't very enjoyable. That wasn't very, no. they weren't really your friend. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I felt like sort of part. Uh, that was just the experience of, well, I didn't quite have parents that were mature or ready to be parents. And my, I think my dad, when my mom married my dad, he was a good man and he had all the qualities. He was going to be an entrepreneur, my mom told me. And wow. he had, yeah, he had great plans, but he got a brain bleed. And the brain bleed forced him to just learn a job. So he learned actually lifting stuff with a crane, well, moving stuff from the ground to top of a building, apparently yeah. could do that. But he lost so much of his speech and his understanding of language. He suffered wow. aphasia and he has suffered wow. aphasia ever since. I'd never heard of it till you, till I read it in the book. It causes somebody to uh, not really kind or because they're frustrated, right? Uh, you have to repeat that you were freaking up to bed. Okay. You were, it sounded like it affects that they're not kind, like they're they're frustrated and agitated, well, and not as. I think that the frustration may be that he don't understand what the people around him say, and people get frustrated at him, and especially me, I would get super frustrated at my dad. Uh, and I yell at him, and he, I don't even know if he understood the words I used when I told him to stop teasing me. Wow. He just didn't know. No. Wow. I, I and your mom? To... Pardon? Well, my, my mom, well, she comes from a very hard childhood so she has she never really she was never really mature in her ways and I always felt like I'm the parent I have to take care of my dad I have to make sure that he's not doing stupid things no. I have to uh, I have to carry this burden all the time and I have to like take care of <sighs> Later on, I had felt like I had to take care of my mom too. So I had like pretty much this burden on me and I was felt like I had this burden on me. I, I don't know if it's the right thing to, to think that I have to be like the parent at that age, but I had no choice. Uh -huh. Because you see areas, you see areas that aren't being taken care of and needs that aren't being met, right? So it's actually phenomenal, the, the ability that you have to bring your thoughts and your feelings and put it into the words that you put in the book. I was impressed, I have to tell you, I was very impressed. I think short yourself, girl, I really do. I think God's really seeing you as you step out I think you're going to be surprised what's coming. Like, you know, like you're, 
And that's my the second Danish language. Yeah, your language. Yeah, and English is your second language. So she wrote this book in English, and she speaks Swedish. So I'm like, wow, wow. I, I was, I was actually, I was really impressed, Sandra. And I can't see it it because people need to hear your story and the the beauty of how you think and process through honestly and vulnerably um, journey that you've been through with the hurt, with the abuse, with the bullying, with the losses. You did it with such grace. And I just want to honor you in that because it, 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 it's phenomenal. It, you know? So keep going because every time I turn around, she's doing something new, guys. She's... <laughs> she's She's a high achiever, you know. She's still a super firstborn. She's an only child, so come on, you can't, you can't stop. Ain't no stopping her now. <laughs> She's on the move. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you about your dog. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love her into. I love her into another room right now because I was afraid yeah, she I know. was barking. But what's her name? Oh well. I named her Maya uh, before I knew what it meant. And then I looked it up and I realized it means princess. Oh. So I used to remind her, you know, the princess is not in charge, it's the king. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it was funny, you guys. She sent me a picture of her with Maya. And it's so funny because Maya is looking straight. <laughs> and she goes, I can't. I can't have that picture with the, her looking like that. So she sends me another picture with her cuddling and I, I laugh so hard. I, like, I didn't even notice the dog until she mentioned it, but she must be pretty special to you. How long have you had her? Uh, she's going to be three years old this autumn. So, and I had her ever since she was a little puppy. Ah. And it was so special when I, got her. I, it was my birthday coming up. And I was like, I, I always have this thing about me and God. I, I get to, on my birthday, I get to like, get a birthday wish. And I always get what I wish for. Wow. So I said to God, I want a dog for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and well, and then I figured, hmm, what kind of dog do I want? I want her to be half poodle. So I said to Gab, okay, I want her to be half poodle. So um, I picked up my cell phone, scrolled to the, you know, all, all the pictures of the little puppies on the internet. And I was like, oh, there's a little cute black dog. Uh, <laughs> and it's half poodle. Hmm, I should go. Get... No, it's not a good time in my life. And I started crying. And I cried. Oh, you know, I cried and I cried. And I cried. I was like, <laughs> I felt so sorry for myself. And then I finally realized, ah, no, can't keep doing this. I'll go buy that dog. So wow. just the day before my birthday, I paid the first money on that dog. That's awesome. Wow. So, so she's really special. She's like your buddy. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, another birthday, as, as this, this little dog is a great, great gift for me. And uh, I'm like, every time I was walking her, she behaves like a nutcase. And she pulls my arms off. And she almost, <laughs> yeah, she has pulled me off my feet a few times. And <laughs> she pulls the leash out of my hand and she, takes off and I have to like run in the other direction so she will run off me and <laughs> crazy but then again I'm just out there and I'm like oh, I'm so glad I got this dog uh, I can uh, see that I can see that yeah and another birthday I always want to tell you that story I realized well I can have anything I want for my birthday it doesn't have to be possible. So 
uh, I always wanted my birthday to be in the summer. Yeah. Because it's the late, really late autumn. It's like in October 31st. So I'm like, mm. uh, Lord, I want my birthday to be in the summer. And I always wanted to have an outdoor party, but I didn't mention that part. I just wanted it to be in the summer. And October 31st came, and I wasn't even thinking about it. I was just out walking, and the sun was shining, and it was like <laughs> summer temperature. And I was like, no, the ground is clear. And there's actually some green leaves on the trees. Wow. <laughs> and then I met a couple of friends. And this was in Stockholm, and I was going to Bible school. And they invited me to the beach because they were going to have like a picnic. So uh. I got my outdoor party on my birthday, and it was summer. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love when that happens. See? Wow. <laughs> That's so cool. I didn't know you went to Bible college. When did, where, when did you go there? A few years ago? Oh, yes. Uh, well, when I wrote my book, there's still so much um, heart healing that needs to happen about that Bible school that I didn't feel like I could bring it up because mm -hmm. I ended up being homeless during that Bible school. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so sorry. And in Stockholm, of all places. Mm -hmm. And But now when I look back on it, uh, first, I only saw the pain, and I only saw the anxiety, mm -hmm. and I only saw this feeling that uh, this, this is not going to work, and my faith is not going to last. But then, when the healing started happening, I, I saw what Jesus did, mm -hmm. and there was this speci specific incident when kind of I was walking in the street, or well, incident, but I, I just, I was just walking in the street and I was outside and I realized I didn't have anywhere to go that night. And it's Stockholm. So it's a little crazy place. Mm -hmm. And I, I said to Jesus, what are we going to do? And he starts singing to me. Mm -hmm. um, and this song that he's saying, I'm going to sing it in Swedish, but I'm going to translate it later. Okay. In att det är bara du och jag, in att det är bara vi två, du är min och jag är din, och kärleken för dig oss samman. It means... Tonight it's only you and me. Tonight oh. it's only we two. You're mine, I'm yours, and the love brought us together. Wow. Whoa. That is beautiful. Yes. Wow. Um, when he sang that song to me, I knew that I wasn't I wasn't alone. Hmm. And a night that could have been terrible, I, I spent just living in his love. He was loving on you. Wow. Yes. And uh, of course, I, I did get somewhere to go because there is like an open McDonald's. So at least I get to be indoors for a moment. Uh, so that's and a lot then, safer than being on the street. Yes. And then I, when I got out of McDonald's, I realized the bus took another road. So I was walking and I, I was trying to find my way back to the Bible College. And it was like I was taking roads all around and ended up in the woods and I was like hmm, hmm, I don't know where I am now so I just took it to put my phone and texted my friend you know what if you wonder where I am so do I <laughs> what did they 
see. What? <laughs> Where are you? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, true story. Wow. Well, I'm thankful that you are okay and you made it through that. Wow. Wow. Yes, and um, after that, I went to church because it was Sunday. And the church is at the same place as the Bible College, technically. So I went just there and I fell asleep on a few chairs. And I tried to, to explain to my pastor my situation because I just wanted someone to, you know, kind of help me. Mm -hmm. And, well, I never really got help from my pastors there because they have this idea that God should help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But aren't we the hands of Jesus? Oh, in <laughs> Jesus' name. <laughs> yes, and there were a few people that actually realized that. They let me sleep on the couches uh, uh, some night. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, I mean, so that and yes, and then I finally got me a place to live. I'm probably not telling the story of how that happened, but um, then uh, after a while, I started seeing something. God just opened my eyes that these people, they behaved more like they were in some kind of I don't know that word. Uh, they weren't in a church very much. They were in like in a controlled society. Uh -huh. And I noticed how controlled they were. Uh -huh. And I realized this is not right. And I said, well, I, I, I want to move. So I want to go back to my hometown now. Uh -huh. And uh, well, the woman of the household, she told me, no, you live here now, and you shall stay, and you shall go to Bible school. And I'm like, no, I think I shall go home now. Wow. And we actually had that discussion for a little more than three months. Wow. And finally, I said that, okay, I'm going home now. And... Well, that was after two months. And she told me, no. And she stopped talking to me. So finally, I used to pull guys to her and said, OK, I'm coming back after Christmas. So I did. I totally live to regret that. But um, technically, I just lived there one more month. And then I, I kind of I just left my things in Stockholm. I just let the second-hand store have all my things except my clothes because I was just, I was just taking off. I, I just ran for my life. Yeah. Because that's how that I felt. <laughs> and, just, you know, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. And, well, I didn't have, like, a, an apartment of my own. But I just called my dad and said, well, can you call your friends uh, and ask if I can stay with them? Because he has like a best friend in my hometown. And he and his, well, not technically his wife, but they live together. So for very many years and achieved them together. So technically. Mm -hmm. I, so I went. And I stayed with them. They're not Christians. And, not, and just maybe a month later, I don't know how long later, because it was such a turmoil for me. I went to visit my aunt. And when I was there, my dad called me like three times. I'm like, what, what is going on? Yeah. And I was so afraid it would be my mom. So I called him back. And he just has this report for me. You know, when you come home to, to, today, Rolf has died. And that's the man in the household. And I drew a full-blown tantrum. 
because I just couldn't believe it and I knew he wasn't a Christian and I was I was just so sad about that in my heart I, I just because I didn't want him to go to hell mm -hmm. and but what happened was I had to call I had to make a phone call and tell someone why I wasn't going to turn up because I had like kind of a job but it wasn't really a job but somewhere to show up at least mm -hmm. and when I called her she's a strong prophetic woman she said well I have prayed and Jesus showed me that because this man took you in he received Jesus and he has he has been saved mm -hmm. and I I really I just realized yes that's the truth and very very many late late years uh, like just now I, I, I gotta say a few weeks ago I was thinking about another man who died and I was thinking well he wasn't a Christian either but he was such a good man I I am just so sorry that he died not knowing Jesus. He was an alcoholic lately in his life. And then God just kind of tapped my shoulder. Sandra, do you remember when you were a child and you were roaming around, didn't have anywhere to go? Did you remember who took you in? Mm. He and his wife. I took him in now. Wow. And I'm like, oh, yes. They're going to have so much fun when they meet up. <laughs> we have a whole family gathering up there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just knowing that my dad's best friend is safe. And yeah, I do believe, I do believe that it's, truth because it lines up with the bible mm -hmm. no. well you know my brother um he passed away december 2018 um and christmas eve my mom was going through his phone and sent us uh, um his text messages that he had had a conversation with a friend six months before he died and it was a gift it, i tell you i didn't even know what i was opening before we open the presents and I start reading and I'm like, it's not for like, I'm like, and it was like, he had come to God and that God had healed him. And he was just too afraid to tell our parents because he felt awkward that he had denied it for so long. It, this whole conversation is, it's a gift, right? And I believe that God shows us because um, we can't, we can't think about it here. We just have to listen to God, what he's showing us. and and release it um, and go through the healing. And I really appreciate you sharing that, Sandra. Thank you. Precious, that's precious. Like, wow, it's very precious. Wow. That's a lot of loss in a, a short time there as well. Yes, um, but just, just being there for this woman too, after he had passed away, I was there to comfort her. I was there to use be a support because she had this big dog that he would be taking care of normally and she just couldn't handle him but I could and um, I mean we became best buds yeah. so he too totally submitted to me yeah. uh, I mean great Labrador retriever I wish I could get my Maya to submit to me like he did <laughs> <laughs> It's her personality. Uh, yeah, she, she is really hyperactive and uh, I wish I could bicycle with her more, but my bicycle is still in north of Sweden and I was going to go get it this summer, but there was just this insanity happening. I mean, mm -hmm. at 4.14, I haven't even been able to go to my parents yet and this whole summer has almost passed and it's like, berry season has almost passed and i'm like no not that bad 
the whole berry season, but like you can have another birthday. Berries. And you get another birthday that summer. <laughs> you come this again this year, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, and yes, just going back to my parents would, oh, I would like to visit my parents. I know that my mom is so sick and, and there is, I have this wish in my heart that I would so like to be able to, you know, support them. Mm -hmm. So when 414 started, mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur for a long time. And I was like, uh, and there was different offer, like be an entrepreneur this, be an entrepreneur that. And I was like, no, 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 not gonna happen. That that's that's the wrong man, that's the wrong man. And then Pedro comes along, oh, that's the right man. <laughs> <laughs> And how we all connected, like so many friends, Sandra. I mean, how many friends? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, when I get up to 50 shares, I'm like, oh, I can't share this thing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got to go in and, and I uh, put it on my page and tag another 50. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's so many, guys, that's how many friends she's accumulated in the last five months and you wrote your book did you write your two children's books in this time and the pictures and your challenges all within these months uh yeah i mean it's been insane <laughs> oh uh I, I mean i haven't shared this with very many but the story goes that i came from a very hard time of my life just now and I kind of moved away from the town where my parents lived just because I just felt so suffocated like they're holding me back I want to do this I want to do that and they're like no you uh, you can't do that because and then tell me long story of why I'm so hopeless Mm. And I'm like, I don't want to hear those stories anymore. Amen. So, so I kind of, uh, well, I got my dog and I got my car and I started driving south. <laughs> yeah. So I spent first night in a parking lot uh, outside uh, like a store. Second night in a parking lot outside a church. And then I kept on driving because my friend, uh, a friend that lived in this town, well, uh, technically a former friend, but I'm not going to go into the story. Um, she said, well, you can come live with me. Mm. And so, yeah, good enough. I did. So, <laughs> uh, and then uh, we found uh, an apartment pretty soon actually he said well there's a lawyer making lines to you better make up your mind real quick i didn't know he said that because there was a drug dealer living next and no one wanted the apartment oh, wow <laughs> so i ended up living in the most beautiful place i mean absolutely stunning with trees and the street and uh, hmm. And a long way to lie next to my door. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the, uh, so they were like, they're picking up, you know, the drugs and everything. And I'm like, oh, hmm, I can't go out tonight. I can't walk my dog tonight. Uh, no, oh, no. what's going to happen? Oh, today is cool. I can go out and walk my dog now. Okay. Uh, it was cool when I went. No, it's the kind of full in the door. What am I going to do? Oh, wow. <laughs> so I, I was having these problems. So technically, I actually ended up living with my friend for a few months late, more, but um, it went a little crazy. And not going into that story, it's just, yeah, just not going into it. Mm -hmm. And then 
found this apartment. And the landlord lives next door. And it's so cold and it's so peaceful. It's just as peaceful as the place where I grew up. And God just kind of moved me from the bottom of the town to the top of like, I mean, people here are so wealthy that they are like having people coming in to do their, they coming in to do their yards. And I'm like, I see like cars coming in and people jumping up and go like, oh, go all over the yard and fixing everything and trimming everything. And, I'm like, and then they jump back into the car and they go to the next house. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, okay, so that's the income level I moved into. Hmm, I'm going to get, trying to make a point. <laughs> and then uh, I also saw that people here actually have horses there are the horse yours here and it's just such an amazing beautiful place lots of grass and lots of trees and i'm like oh this is this is stunning and this apartment is so nice and it's so wow. big and it's so bright and i i just love living here and awesome and uh only problem is I kind of broke up with my friend, but that's, I had a very good reason. I'm not telling you, <laughs> um, honest. Mm. So I, well, since then I haven't got like a real life friend, but God gave me like countless online friends. So I feel, a lot. Like, <laughs> yeah, I feel like I hang out with a lot of people and now that I think about it, I think the landlord wants to be my friend, but I never thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> you got to give them a copy of one of your books. Would you like to, would you like to read from your book? Uh, now I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm not disappearing, I'm just moving out. So do you have it right there where you're going to read? Yes, uh, um, I just... I don't know if this um, chapter has been edited yet. I don't remember how many chapters we have edited, but I hope it's been edited so that you will have some proper English in it. <laughs> yeah, that, that would help, but I, I pray you find the right spot. Do you, um, are you ready for me to pull out? You ready to go? Okay. Uh, yes. I just want to read a piece of a chapter or maybe a chapter, I don't know. It depends uh, of my children's book, The Light Post That Got Saved. So I apologize if the camera is moving a little now because I need to move this thing. And this chapter is called The Annoying Bird. I took help, by the way, from this one. I took help from some online people to find uh, names of birds that were mean, kind of. I know I've been busy the last few days. It's been crazy. There was a bird that sat on top of me and he simply had a lot to say. Crow, crow, crow. You have reached 222-389. Please leave a message after the beep. Crow, crow, crow. That wing fella keep on nagging forever. I think I will know this phone number until the day I rust. I couldn't get him to say anything that made sense either. Stupid do the bird. Oh, well, he wasn't really a do the bird either. He was quite big and and do, he was big, quite big though and quite color. And by the way, sometimes he said something else, but of course it didn't make sense. Mama Starling, kiss you. You have reached. Jesus loves you, this I know. And that was the worst singing voice I heard since a bunch of teens drank and beyond sang the theme song to Chip and Dale. God sees you. Oh, I really hope so. I hope. Not the God go. So after he had been seated there for a few hours, he flew away and ate a little in a tree and then he returned. God sees you. How convenient. Please send a thunderstorm to this bird. We'll be fried chicken soon. I can't stand the blood math. Psst. That's 
And that's when the dog came and peed on me. Thank you very much. There are trees, pee on them instead. They might need a little of what you pour out, but I'm made of iron. I'm a light post, not a toilet. Crow, crow, woof, woof, crow, crow. Oh, you're barking too, you little pigeon. I'm not well. I wonder if the mental hospital has a free spot for a poor life post. Finally, he said, God help me. Oh, finally. A good prayer by Gago means. I hope his prayer would be answered. But it was evening. And he slept in a pine tree all night while I did what I always do at night. I shone with my arm light and on people and deer and cat, and unfortunately, one well, not a dog. Then he returned. Mountains and pilot, and these are two horses. We're up pulling a carriage. Kid you horsey, crab crab. What should I say? I'm Mr. Lightfoss. I'm mute by nature. The woman stopped the carriage. The horses were impatiently throwing their heads. Crab crab. Kiss you, mommy's darling. The woman staring at me. You look pretty much like if you were thinking, I never heard a light post speak before. The mouth was wide open, like the hole on a bird's nest box. Hi, you have reached an answering machine. I see you now, the woman spoke. She was just about to roll the carriage, when something in her face was starting to realize the absurd thing in the fact that the light post has his own answering machine. He looked up at me again. I was like laughing a little on the inside. This was quite comedic. Jesus loves me. The stupid seagull started. I just almost got an electric overpower and died from laughter. But of course you can hear that. That's when she spotted the bird. The following days was full activity. So that's as far as I wanted to share. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> the light force you get saved. <laughs> Very interesting perspective. What made you what made you think of writing this about the light light force? Well, Pedro said, just do something, hey. So I took uh, a few notes and I started writing up verse and I threw them into a, a pot and I put it on the table and I drew three verse and I pulled out light post orange and horse. There it came. There you go, guys. You just <laughs> never know how a book might come to be. And just, it made me smile. It was, <laughs> there's a lot more humor in there that you give. There's a lot of laughter. I can see you have like that sense of humor. <laughs> Call it every different character. So very good. I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Um, I have a question that um, I think is the most important to you uh, because you mentioned in your book that you feel you always felt God there since a small girl, yes. um, but you didn't know Jesus. So could you share with us that journey of how you, you knew you felt God was there. He, you probably even heard him but how you came to know Jesus? Well, the thing is, I technically I met Jesus as a child. And I met Jesus in a dream and but he never mentioned his name. Mm. So I came to refer to him as the king because he said to me, I'm a king. Mm. And then he showed me, well, he showed me just the world and all the evil in the world. And he showed me, well, technically not all the evil, but he showed me a very evil world. And he was just walking next to me in this evil world. And then he showed me a great depression. And he showed me also heaven. And he showed me, well, he didn't technically took me to hell, but he, he showed me the place. So I have seen 
yeah, I've seen the cloud and I have heard it. They, this news that comes up from hell. Wow. But I've seen heaven too. And that part is amazing because yeah. it's so green, it's so beautiful. And all the birds are singing and there's music going on. And he's walked next to me and he walked me out on this cliff and uh, just showed me what was outside of wow. heaven. Wow. And I'm so glad he showed me because I wouldn't have been able to believe that if I didn't see it for myself. That's just who I am. That's awesome that you get visions like that, Sandra. Have you been able to see angels? Yes, a few times. Wow. I've always wanted to. I can feel they're there. And I've had people come and tell me when I play music, they've seen them standing behind me. Someone said she was white. And she goes, there's 12 to 15 foot, three of them standing behind you, Stacy, And they're pointing for something to leave. And I'm like, what? I felt them there, but I can't see them. So I'm praying, God help me to see angels. Because what a gift. Well, um, actually... I saw one in the Pentecostal church. I haven't seen them very many times, but I was just sitting there and uh, I was just looking up and I see a really huge angel standing in front. Oh, look, uh, I'm seeing things. Oh, look, I'm still seeing things. Uh, oh, look, I'm still just seeing things. And then I walk away a few days later. Wait, I was sitting there looking at an angel. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't realize because wow. I, was just, I was just thinking, ah, yeah, I'm just a little crazy today. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But you know, my, when my children see uh, spiritually, they can see the angels and the evil and it's scary sometimes when you have dreams because um you have to be really pray protection like god's gifted you sandra as a visionary like to see visions you I know i haven't seen very much in the spirit lately though um i've been working so hard <laughs> i think that lord the lord may be, be prote protecting me a little bit right yeah. now because he knows that uh uh, the position I just came from. Uh, I haven't shared this with very many people, but just before 414 started, I mean, I had come out of the mental hospital because of a depression, and I was on social, wow. on some social security. I was sick of it. Yeah. So, doing something about it. Wow, girl, <laughs> here's an inspiration. Wow. And I mean, that was crazy. And uh, I, I hate it. I hate just having just enough to live on. Me and too. the thing is, uh, when I started out as an entrepreneur, I kind of, I wanted that healing that God had for me from autism. And well, I just felt like, I don't know if this was God or if it was just me, but Sandra, you can't keep your um, disability money and be healed. And I'm like, or you, you can't keep it when you're healed. And I'm like, okay, I'm sending in the papers. So I sent in the, a paper just like, I want to get off the disability money. And that wrecked my finances. Wow. So my finances have been wrecked for a few months now, but it's just starting to turn around. I mean, I'm getting an income from the challenges. And yes. Uh, so my bills are starting to come. Well, they're not exactly, I'm not exactly cooked up with everything, but hey, I'm starting to get cooked up with my, my bills now. It's, it's a like, pivot. It's a pivot. It's literally a pivot in your life. Um, yeah, it's turning around. Yeah, from what, but from before 414 and what you were going through yes. to the 30 days of in 414, guys, is Esther 414 talking about such a time as this. And it was a 30 days of being taught, like 
as entrepreneurs and from Holy Spirit. It was amazing. It, it's life changing for me. You've heard me talk about it if you've been on any of my interviews. And that's how, where I met Sandra. And she's telling us that something shifted in her. The dream yes. that came alive to be an entrepreneur is happening. And what you've accomplished, Sandra, in the last few months is way more than most of us have. So I, I just, we celebrate, right guys? We celebrate, like we just cheer you on because this is just the beginning, baby girl. This is just the beginning. Yes, this is just the beginning. And uh, uh, I do believe when um, there, there was this guy that was on uh, Pedro's call, he's a mentor of Pedro, but I don't remember what his name was. Anyway, he said that, um, you know, you should set a financial goal for the next month. And I was like, setting a financial goal for the next month is really hard because I'm working on a children's book and uh, it's not going to work. Uh, I'm setting a goal for the end of the year instead. Mm. I want to be a millionaire in Swedish terms by the end of the year. That's like $100,000. That's doable. Uh, well, it's uh, I'm like way behind, but the uh, scammer, but okay. God is still God, so... And then uh, Graham Cook comes on and says, you, well, you should ask the Lord for a promise for your business. And I'm like, okay. Peter says, okay, mate, let's make that homework. And I'm like, God, a promise. Uh, you're not getting one until you go get the canvas in color because you're, you're painting it. <laughs> wow. So, uh, well... I had a little money in my purse, so I got into my car and I got there and I just booked the canvas and booked some colors and I was like looking for pencils. I'm like, God, I need pencils. No, you don't. But hmm. God, I need pencils. No, you don't. But God, I need pencils. No, you don't. So I went <laughs> home uh, and I got my promise. It's okay if I go get it. Yeah, I want to see. I want you to show it. I just, I'm smiling so much, guys, because she just amazes me. Like, God is amazing what he's doing in so many people's lives. Just celebrating. Okay. My cheeks so, are hurting. <laughs> uh, and the promise, no, it's, uh, I just wrote it up with my fingers. It got a little crazy. But uh, so the promise I got is the best years of my life has just begun. And I'm a billionaire. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, and I need to be a billionaire for the, the ideas that God has laid in my heart. Because I want, to house, I want to house people that are homeless now. And I want to take them in and get them rehab, rehabilitated from drugs and alcohol. And I want to put them to work. And I want to make them work with horses and like work in yeah work in the countryside where they can't get the alcohol and the drugs anyway and they will fall in love with their animals too much to get back yeah. anyway so but that's my idea just work them like dogs and yeah wow and sandra you would be really there to do that yeah you know what it, it really is i was talking to my daughter my older daughter today and um i got this like you don't serve as a slave. You serve as a princess in humility and grace and love. And mm -hmm. there's something about knowing who God created us to be. And I believe so many people that know Jesus, so many are so depressed and so discouraged because they think it's about the money, right? But then I heard this message the other day. This beautiful lady I met in 414, um, she had a challenge and I went to it. She sent me this teaching about revelation, calculation, and operation. And it just 10 minutes long. And it was like, listen to what God's showing you. Yes. Right? Then she says, so get the revelation. She says, then get out a pen and paper and calculate without any money, with nothing. Just write it. Just write. Okay, I need a... I need a farm, I need a ranch, right? I need some animals, I need some staff, I need a cook, right? Write it all out. She said, calculate what is the need? 
because yeah. vegan, I need a village. I, I need apartments. Yeah. I need houses. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so uh, down. I mean, I need a, like a restaurant. I need a church. I need <laughs> pastors. I, I need. <laughs> Uh, well, technically, I hope to marry the pastor, uh, whoever he is. <laughs> I love it. The, the thing is, uh, Kat has promised me a son, so I do believe that means he promised me his father too. Mm. So uh, technically, I'm just waiting for him to come around and find me. But I do have a question that he needs to answer first. And, oh. that's, and technically, I named my son, and I do believe that the Holy Spirit is going to give him a revelation. Uh, he's going to get a word of knowledge, and he's going to be able to answer what I named my son. Mm. But I'm not telling you. No. Nope. Because I, I don't want anyone to find out until he says the right name. Exactly. Exactly. And there's so many people who've been trained because, well, I don't look too bad. And I've been on <laughs> Instagram for a while. And, you know, they, they've been like coming along and telling me, you know, I'm the right guy. I want to marry you. Well, answer the question. I can't, but I'm the right guy. <laughs> and I'm like, no, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Sandra, you're such a, such a pleasure to have on. My cheeks are literally hurting. I, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just smiling because you bring a lot of people. That is a that you have, is to bring a smile out of others. Well, you should smile more because then you exercise the muscles. Yes. It's very good for my face. Maybe it'll make me look younger, right? <laughs> Well, can I pray for you? And um, then we can pray for other people where God leads. God, I thank you for Sandra. I thank you for her heart. I thank you for, wow, the woman that she is, the go-getter that she is, the inspiration she is, God, um, the accomplisher. Like she completes things. Uh, she's after she goes and does it, God, I just pray for the release of the visions that you've given her. for to be a billionaire God, to have the church and the um, restaurant, all the things that are needed to house people, God. Thank you that you put this burning in her. Thank you that you put this flame in her, God. Nothing is too big for you. None of us can say never because we don't know, God. So we thank you for what you are showing her. And we lift her up, God. I thank you for more and more discernment more and more clarity, more and more wisdom, God. And the verse that you keep giving me is, Sandra, wh whether you go to the left or right, there's a, you'll hear a voice behind you saying, Sandra, this is the way, walk in it. God, just like you led her to this apartment, just like the experience she had with the roommate at the other place that wasn't safe, God, you use that in her story. That's a part of her journey. Thank you for every part of her story. And God, I celebrate her. My, my heart is lifted. My heart is excited to just hear your story, Sandra, and to know you. And I honestly, I just feel really excited because I think God's going to surprise you, <laughs> surprise all of us. And I just, I just want to have it on record to say we're standing with you. Like, we're here. And we're believing this for many of us to rise up beyond what we could ever think or imagine that God would bless you exceeding and abundantly above what you, above what you could ever think or imagine. And father, I thank you for her parents. And I thank you that you're bringing healing. Thank you for healing. Thank you for hope for them. And God, there's nothing that's too great for you. So thank you, God, for the place that you placed her to grow up, that you chose it, that you, you knew her story and you knew that she would be here today impacting and she's on the radio already god she's she's just going 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 so god thank you that you're releasing her more and may others get to know her there's many in here that already know you and love you but may others get to know her god and what she carries in authority as being raised and being misdiagnosed being misunderstood and rising above god 
with with the the condition of Asperger's, God would not understand, and yet she has such a beautiful heart, and God, she's abnormal in a good way. <laughs> she's an abnormal beauty, and so I thank you, Father God, for what you're using her for in these challenges and expanding, and you know, teaming with people. I'm 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 ecstatic. I am. So thank you, thank you for sharing what you did tonight. Thank you. And I also see that Ramona is on here, and me and Ramona, we are doing the challenge together. Yes. And uh, one, of, one of them that starts on September 1st. I have set start date for my own challenge September 1st, but that's going to be 30 days. So, uh, and this challenge is going to, only going to be seven days. So I'm not going to do challenges all month. <laughs> but the one you're doing with Ramona is going to be a different focus. Um, yes. Not yes, it's not. going to be more intense and it's going to be more work. But this challenge, the understanding of this challenge is just going to be like, I, I'm just going to keep it really short here because mothers don't have as much time. Uh -huh. That's true. <laughs> they have to be quick. So, well, Sandra, do you want to pray for anyone here or do you feel comfortable with that? Uh, I'm just praying with you because I. I just don't feel like leading, if that's okay. Oh no, it's fine. I'm whatever you're comfortable with. Is it so? I just saw a prayer request up here um, from Ethel. Um, please pray for my husband. His name is Ailes. He, for him to come back to the Lord, his heart to be softened instead of a rock. So God, oh. thank yeah. you. Yes. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Well, I think I might be leading this one if that's okay. Mm -hmm. I just felt that, Lord, you know, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this prayer request. Thank you, Lord, that this uh, is the woman that posted. Yeah, it should be. It's your husband, right? Yeah. Thank you, Lord, that this woman there to post this prayer request in this thread. And Father, you know, you know this rock heart. It's not going to be a rock heart forever. It's going to be a heart of flesh, just like you did for me, Lord. Just like you took the rock out of my heart and put a heart of flesh in there. You are going to do the same for this man. And I ask that, I ask that bad behavior should just be broken out. And I ask that you shall be the Lord in this household, for real, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You know, Christine, Christine Kerr, she's my friend from Calgary here. She's in the 100X too. Please pray for healing for her knee. Oh, okay. Father God. Thank you that, thank you that you have sent Jesus Christ to die for all our sickness, and I just ask for healing for this knee. Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. And Father, I thank you for alignment for Christine, and wherever anything came in that was um, twisted, um, emotionally or physically in her life and surrounding or spiritually, um, that emotionally impacted her heart god i pray that you would just heal that and god break off anything that's um coming at her for stopping her from moving forward and what the plans you have for her and god i thank you for what she's stepping into stepping into with a full healthy knee in jesus name healed thank you jesus anyone else need prayer said thank you sorry my feet are kind of starting to hurt i can't me. believe you stood up it's so like, <laughs> i i don't know if i could use one of those standing desks i don't know if i could do it or not well it's technically it's not a standing desk it's a tower oh uh, <laughs> it's a table and a chair and on top of that is some kind of a bowl and I, <laughs> I love it. 
Uh, mine, is, um, mine is on top of a keyboard and it's like a box and then a Bible. <laughs> yeah, I, I took a picture and sent it to Ramona before I started. She said, that's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a it's a look is a little insane, but everybody starts somewhere, and I do my yeah. challenge standing in this corner with this tower. Amen. I have the same situation. I we do with what's in our hands. You know, let's let's pray for um, the ladies are on tonight for provision to come for all of us that uh, God would just show where the next steps are. You know, for resources and oh yes, and I. I was so worried about finances for a long time. But then there was someone who just said this Bible verse, you know, God has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. And godliness is also to pay all the bills and to pay everyone we owe own money. So technically he's already given us that. Yeah. Amen. So I'm not worried anymore. I just pulled a Bible verse and <laughs> relaxed. Learn from, learn from Sandra, guys. <laughs> That's what I need to do too. Just relax. You know, you know what's interesting is since I started sowing into good soil, yes, I didn't understand. It actually does make sense. Yes, it does. And then there was more came. I was like, oh, this is interesting. And I look back and I'm like, how did I, how did I spend that much money? I didn't have any, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, here's Christine said, I've been doing ABCDs, a big challenge distraction. Wow. That's a huge challenge. Christine, you and me in challenges. <laughs> I love you. Sumi saying you're awesome. Good Sumi. You know, I, I still remember the first prayer I ever prayed. And that prayer was actually interestingly enough before i was born because i had this encounter with god kind of an encounter just from coming out of, from not being aware to being aware and i just pretty much came out into this light and the sound of heartbeats and i just knew that i or knew yeah technically i knew that i was in god but i didn't have the word for it i didn't have any words actually i didn't have a language and I was just resting there in that. And when God started speaking to me, he said, would you like to be born boy or girl? And I said, this is my first prayer. And this is when I first received my language. I said, I want to be born a girl because I want a challenge. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but... That's no, funny. I actually have friends. I actually have friends that have told me similar stories. Oh yes. Yeah. Then, so yeah, that's profound. Yeah. But I don't have that story. I wish I did, but I heard other people share, and I thought, wow, that's amazing. Um, yeah. Well, coming to life, just having this memory and carrying this memory in my spirit all the time. That made me never, ever doubt God. Mm. I couldn't, and I wouldn't. Even if I could, I wouldn't, because that's just insanity. You know, the fool says in their hearts that there is no God, so I just don't want to be a fool. No. No. <laughs> I felt God from a very young age, too, before I knew Jesus. It was like... I say like, it was like you were in, I felt like you're in this garbage can, you know, that's kind of how I pitch and this big hand is lifting you and pulling you out. I felt that yes. as a child, like he was always there. And yes. so I resonate with that when you shared that, you know, that it's like he, he likes to speak to you. Yes. And um, the fact that my dad was such a child, when I grew up, that he, well, he, he wasn't able to be a dad, even if he was physically present. It, well, God was my dad. Mm -hmm. And I, 
I experienced very strong that it's not depressed right here. <laughs> it's the uh, four fourteen. Oh, I forgot what time it is over there. She's amazing. It's like in the morning. You're amazing. You did, uh, you did good. And it's like, where was I? I started looking at the luck and then I lost my You're record. saying that God is a good father. And yes, yeah. God is a good father. And he's been my dad ever since I was a little girl. And that's how I lived. So I, even if I didn't know Jesus, I still had that God being there, helping me, teaching me stuff, giving me dreams, talking to me. And I remember yeah. back in school when I was being bullied and, and, uh, well, I had, I had, apparently I didn't know it, but my parents knew it. I had been given this diagnosis that was called DAMP at the time, but it's ADHD now. And my dad just tells me pretty much that, well, because you have this diagnosis, now remember that he has aphasia, he, he doesn't, he probably doesn't know what he's saying. And uh, he says that therefore, well, you deserve to be bullied. And I didn't know that he had a face. I didn't know that he didn't understand what he was saying. But I knew one thing. I heard a voice next to me. And the voice said, that is not true. And said loud. And oh. I, I'm like, oh, the man's voice speaking to me right here. And I just knew he's telling the truth. And I don't know who he is. I've got a clue, actually. Wow. Wow. And then, of course, very much later, when God gave me a vision of the situation, I saw Jesus literally standing in the room and saying, that is not true. Wow. Amen. Amen. That's incredible. Wow. And to have that revelation of him as your father, like how many of us struggle so many years of our life, you know, not understanding God as a as our father, as our daddy. That's beautiful what you shared. Wow. How old are you, Sandra? I'm 38 years old now. It's about time I go into my calling. Yes, it's a perfect time. It's been a long, long journey to get here. It's been a long journey before I got into 414 and started out on the journey that God had already laid in my heart. Um, but I have gone into my, uh, I had a special interest for very many years and this special interest is still working. I sh cannot share everything about it, but it's kind of a study in numbers. And it's not numbers meanings. It's not biblical, technically. It's just numbers and relationships to one another. That sounds um, cool. Yeah, so I won't bore you with it, but if <laughs> from a scientist's viewpoint, it's probably amazing. Yeah. Um, and My son said, loves this stuff. My son reads these books on numbers. Um, yes. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm not reading anything. I, I pray. Do you see numbers? Like uh, color? My son does, like he sees them spiritually. No, not that way. But I, well, the Lord, the Lord is showing me things about numbers. Mm. And I was in a roadblock and I got a dream. He showed me something specific, but I'm not telling you what that was because this is secret until I get to the university. But it was a certain number and I got to this play, place like, I know this means something. So I started studying it and studying it and studying it. And one day I was just at my work, I was cleaning, I uh, had a cleaning job back then. And I was just standing there, we were getting ready to clean. And then it just came revelation to me like that. So I did like a, a dance. Huh. And 
the guy who was with me, he just looks at me and says, you know, it's good that we are in the right house and not in the other house right now. <laughs> yeah, the very specific sense of humor. Yeah, I, I just love him, but um, well, he is a little special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds fascinating about the numbers. Um, my son got a prophetic word for me, number for me, and I thought mm -hmm. it was like one, two, fifteen, no, twenty-three numbers. And then he broke them all down into the order of the numbers was very important. Yes. The revelation he got from God, he explained every number. I have it all written out. It's pretty profound. And it, it's really, to me, about walking in healing and heaven and earth opening. Um, cool. Yeah. It's, so numbers are, like, I, I hear about it from my son. And I believe God uses it without it being that weird, you know, that weird stuff. Um, because science is... It comes from God, you know, and we worship the creator of yes. All but not, all, not all science comes from God. There is a lot of science going on there that is just crap. Mm -hmm. Excuse the expression, but it's not. And then there is a lot that is probably on the true side. And but if we want to see the true story, we just get back to the Bible. Uh, that's my idea. But there is one science that cannot be changed, and that's the mathematics. Yes. Because it's always, it has to be right or it isn't. It's black or it's white. So it's the only science that can be trusted, according to me. It's true. Uh, and then we have the Bible and can be trusted, of course. Yeah. Well, Christine loves numbers too. Mm, okay. Sorry. Uh, then I'm going to numbers. I, I, I get a little excited about that, but I know that I've worked with very many people. So yeah, so I'm not talking enough about that. I'm gonna hear about fishing instead. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you stayed up this long, girl. You did amazing. I forgot uh, you were that late there. She she had a nap, she tried to have a nap, but she was so excited and um this really late over there, and I'm amazed that you Yeah, I was like, oh so cool, that's so cool, that's so cool. Okay, yeah, uh, try to see. <laughs> and then uh, Ramona started to send me some DMs, and I'm like, yeah, this is great, oh, good picture. And I'm like, yes. And uh, then I tried to say that, okay. And then you DM me, and then the alarm goes off, and I'm like, okay, time to get up. Yeah. So you did, I had a class You did amazing, Sandra, and everyone enjoyed having you. Yeah, yeah. So, sorry awesome. if I can't keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I wish I could keep my mouth shut sometimes. I like, I need a piece of tape. Me too. Me too. <laughs> I'm excited too. Yeah. I, we, I, we're, I on we're like, we're excited. And, you know, you brought enthusiasm tonight. You brought some really good thoughts. And Christine here at Palachek saying, I want to learn about numbers. So, you know, some people aren't bored. Uh, it would be interesting for you to share that when you're ready to uh, film that and say what you've learned about, you know. Yes, that. I'm thinking the day I go to the university and I get a group of, I hope I get a group of uh, professor, professors that's watching because I just don't want to show it to one professor to begin with because you can say, well, this is my stuff. But if I get it to a group, then... That's, that's what I see in front of me. And I just want to start a live recording and, you know, go live, maybe not show the, the blackboard but, or the whiteboard, whatever I'm writing on, but just go live and do it live. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to share with my son. I think he would find it interesting. I can never get him uh, sit down and focus because he, he, he gets books out of the library <laughs> on studying. Like, he finds it fascinating, so... Well, we're coming to the close of the night and it's been, it has been really fun and I love your heart. Everybody else thinks you're so cute and. <laughs> yeah, and I'm the mm -hmm. Oh no, no, that's, don't worry about it. You're, doing, you're being you, you're being you. This is about you. 
This is about your story. Troy Brewer has a great book on numbers. Have you heard of that? Uh, no. No. So, well, she learns from God, Christine. <laughs> Deborah Luzecki, Luzecki says, uh, great job. Thank you, Deborah. Janet Swims, I love you both. Yes, love you. You guys are so awesome. See? That was mm -hmm. Janet Swind. You see, you have all these people who don't cover your mouth. Keep speaking. God gave us a voice and we're going to use it. Yes. And I noticed too that uh, sometimes I make a fool of myself in in a situation, but I'm not too good to apologize when when I do something nasty. So I think you do amazing, Sandra. And sometimes when we get nervous, um, I my husband says, Stacy, you're nervous. I'm like, no, I'm not. He's like, yes, you're talking so fast and nonstop. And he says, you're nervous. I'm like, no, I'm not. He's like, yes, you are. Like, because I don't feel safe or secure, you know? And so like certain situations don't make us feel safe and oh, yes. it's not always our fault, you know? Yeah. And, you know, I, I actually felt a little nervous the first five minutes that we were going live. Then this this kind of, I'm not that, I'm not that, um, uh, well, just not that, Worried, you know, all the since I since I did my first live rap, my first rap in front front of audience ever, in front of like over a thousand people, wow. at middle in the night, out yeah. of breath, making it after midnight full of myself. Since then, I just don't care anymore. Yep, I agree. <laughs> and Deborah said, never a fool. God is with you. <laughs> Thanks, Deborah. That's but, good. That's yeah, but, yeah, okay. I, I might not be a fool, but I made a fool of myself that night. I know it. But I don't care. And it seems that the people that were listening don't care either because they seem to love me anyway. Yeah. And I used to receive so much grace after that crazy life. Yeah. See, people got to know you and they felt comfortable and you were just you. And that's the best is when people are be that's what's happening in the world is we're taking off masks, many people that, have, and they're, and, and, but yet people, we're, we're forced to put them on, but we're taking off the mask of covering who we are. Oh, yes. I noticed that the, you won't with masks a lot in, the USA right now. But I actually saw one person in the store that was wearing a mask the other day. And um, that's, yeah, unusual. We, we don't really wear masks here, but every time I go into the store and I feel the blood of Jesus over me, because even if I don't believe that COVID is just as dangerous as they say, they, it's still, it's still a disease and I still don't like it. Yeah, I got kicked out of a restaurant because I didn't have a mask two days ago. And I was like, what? He just like, you need to get out. I'm like, what? I've never had anybody treat me like that. And I'm like, okay, I'm out. Here out. I'm out. <laughs> but I was. this is a weird, It's this is Canada in a small town. Yeah. And our town where we live doesn't require it. But the big town, the, the big city, Calgary does. And then Canmore does. But Cochrane doesn't. So it's kind of interesting we get used to not having to worry about it. And then you go and you're like, everybody, I, I'm in the store and I'm like, I wish to be wearing masks because everybody's got one on in this. I just don't know. So I pray to, because I don't go out a lot. Obviously I've talked about that, but it's, it is an adjustment for all of us. So. Oh yes. Um, well, I think that most is probably overrated kind of. That's a whole conversation. Like in the world, we have some people who are like adamant about it. So I don't get into that kind of conversation. I just talk about how I feel, you know, yeah. personally. It's just, yeah. it's in my 51 years, I've never seen what I'm seeing in this world. And for you younger people, like my kids too, I'm like, wow, you guys, as you look back, like in my 20s, I never saw this, you know. So it's a whole journey. But I try to focus on, um, what is God saying to me? Love, you know, 
inspiration, encouraging people. That's why I keep doing the interviews and having people share their stories so that it's oh, up. You, you're doing great. I have seen some of your interviews and you're doing Thank great. You. You're such a big support. I love it. I'm like, there's Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, let me just close in prayer. And thank you, God, that we had such a beautiful night. I'm still smiling, and I'll be smiling when I get off of here. Um, thank you for the plans that you have for Sandra and I and every woman on here. We just cover you with blessings, guys, and the men who are on here. I saw Anders, and we have this John uh, from Australia who comes on sometimes. And so welcome, and just cover each of our lives, God, with what you've given the assignment for us to do, and that we will step into our purposes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys. Uh, lots of love. And I will be back on Tuesday. Yeah. God bless. Good night.